Hi, guys. Welcome back to the Deciding Factor podcast. I'm John. And I'm Alton. And Barb is joining us again on this particular podcast where we're actually going to talk about disasters and being prepared for them. What is the best item to have when it comes to preparing for a disaster? But what else can they expect on this, Alton? What do you think they'll learn? Mm, what are they going to learn on here? They're going to learn about you and all the time you're spending on Pinterest. And uh, yes, yeah, good, some good little nuggets, good little nuggets about hillbillies and uh, some of the things that you and I did to be prepared in our little latest emergency here in Texas, 100 plus car pileups and IOUs. Nice. And Barb, what should these good listeners of ours do other than make fun of me and Pinterest? Nothing. That's- <laughs> <laughs> we're That's losing it. We funny. haven't even started the show. So, oh, and, and we're tagging everyone who's not prepared for anything. Yeah. So make we're sure them. we're calling them out. <laughs> so make sure you stay tuned to this episode. Also click that subscribe button. She's still laughing. It's funny. You gotta be like, smash that like button. Click the little bell notification to be notified every time we post new stuff. There you go. You said it for me. You did it better than I can. All right, guys, stay tuned. This is the deciding factor. Everyday life issues broken down to help you build your own opinions on the issues that matter most. Coming to you from Austin, Texas, this is The Deciding Factor with your host, Alton Hill and John Herzog. All right, guys, welcome back to The Deciding Factor. And in this episode, we're going to go over disaster prep. And the biggest thing is, is what is really the most important thing to have when thinking about disaster preps? So recently, uh, as a lot of you may have heard, um, Texas actually had a really big Arctic blast that came through and screwed most of Texas up. Blasted. Well, blasted. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> so me and Alton actually live in the heart of Texas down in Austin. And we were a part of all of the mess that went on and... I can tell you this is probably going to be a very important podcast to, to take into reference because we're going to tell you what happened with us. Um, I don't think Barb, you've ever, you haven't had a disaster that you've ever been a part of other than COVID. I did run out of coffee once and that was not, that was not fun, but no, <laughs> that, no, not like this. <laughs> seriously. That was when I realized that it was going to get ugly was when my power was out and my grinds were all ready. The water was there, but there was no power to brew coffee. I was like, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> must take action. So, so we had the Arctic blast was our problem as far as disaster goes, but there's a load of them. So, I mean, there's hurricanes, there's tornadoes, uh, epidemics or pandemics can be considered one. Uh, what were some of the other ones you listed earlier, Alton? Oh yeah. So, I got this pretty cool book that I'll be honest, I have not, you know, read from front to back yet. It's called the, the Prepper's Blueprint. It was given to me by one of my good buddies. This is written by Tess Pennington. So thank you, Tess. Uh, yeah, so it goes into all sorts of different types of emergencies, short-term, long-term, um, and is really quite thorough, but uh, here's the list. Winter storms, hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, extended power outages. I think that that, you know, that was what we really experienced and what I think messes up a lot of people. Floods, mandatory evacuation, fires, epidemics, economic downturns, right? And that's what we were mentioning a little bit before the podcast is here comes COVID and, uh, and COVID along with it brought a market crash. So now we're not just worrying about dying from some disease, <laughs> but we're also broke. So we're going to die broke. It's a real, 
real issue. <laughs> that is some great bedtime reading right there. That's uh, thank you. For yeah, that. welcome to the podcast, everybody. <laughs> we stay positive here. <laughs> This is my I'm drinking from my cup of cheer. <laughs> yes. Nailed it. So, <laughs> so I don't know about y'all, but you always have these people that go in and hoard a bunch of stuff, right? As something's about to happen, right? You people. That's how you talk to them. You people. Okay. The the toilet paper grabbers. We talked about you before. <laughs> so and we got edited because it was explicit. But yeah. <clears throat> what? Yeah. <laughs> so the the issue I have here is what what exactly do y'all think of of people that do that? Are you against it or for it? Have you changed your mind since being in the situation or what? I think that um, <clears throat> you know we've talked about this before about kind of what mindset do you have? I think that that's a very fear mindset that um in any disaster and i don't know what the definition of disaster is but i think um like before the show we were asking barbara hey barbara so what kind of disasters have you been in and she's like well i don't know you know and i'm like well, what happens when the water goes off and she goes well we just go to our water storage tank and it's like well <laughs> it's not a disaster when you're prepared it's just you make a, make a switch. And, um, you know, I saw one guy posting about the empty shelves in HEB and uh, our grocery store. If you're not in Texas and aren't privy to HEB's awesomeness. Um, he's like, seriously, do y'all only have 24 hours worth of food in your house? Like, and then at that point, when you realize that your cupboards are bare and I mean, with, with our case and hurricane Katrina, right? Cause this book talks a lot about hurricane Katrina. It's like, you know, these things are coming, you know, they're coming. We knew it was going to be eight degrees, like seven or 10 days out. And, um, like, that's not the time that you run out and start hoarding. Like it's a lack of planning is what I'm trying to say. You weren't planning for any emergency. You're just responding and panicking instead of being prepared. Yeah. So the, the way, I guess let's talk about the, the winter storm that happened here in Texas. So like you said, we've got the warning a week in advance, everybody can see it coming. And if you've ever been in Texas, as soon as the weather drops below 32 degrees, we pretty much shut down, especially if there's any precipitation because people don't know how to handle ice. If they see snow, it's, play day. So, you know, schools will cancel early, <laughs> but, uh, this was a little different. There was a lot of mayhem that was added to it. So it started getting cold and what was it? Friday, Friday ish. It started getting cold. No big deal. Wasn't thinking anything of it. I think the first real effect was when Sunday came around and I think the all the roads were iced over yeah, because like bad ice, not snow yeah. iced. Yeah. And we, we don't have a whole lot of salting trucks. So when our roads are iced, you're pretty much screwed. No one has chains for their tires. I don't even think the fire department has them half the time, but uh, we had to cancel church. Like the elders and everything contacted us and said, no one's coming in. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to do something different. Yeah. And I was thinking, ah, oh, no big deal. We've got another two or three days of, of really cold weather. We had one, one day chance of snow, I think at first, and then it turned into, yeah, oh. but it was a five inch chance though. It's like <laughs> yeah. probably snow this day a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it doesn't snow much. Like the most we've ever had in the past, I think is two, maybe three inches since I've been alive. Yeah. It's like flurries and never sticks. Yeah. generally right the, the next day it's gone mm -hmm. so you know we we shut down church and then things got worse and worse well they closed off the road so just to be clear i've driven in colorado a lot i own a land rover this is my third land rover i've driven in all sorts of 
icy conditions, mountainous conditions. I've been on four by four trails in the snow that are so narrow. If you like, can't make it up it, you have to back down it because like, and they're so narrow. You can't even like do this little U-turn. You have to like back up portions and this, the, the icy roads that were out there, you know, that Sunday or whenever, um, were some of the worst I've been in, even in the Land Rover, like it did not like those icy conditions. So yeah, I mean, people are shutting down roads at that point. And so even with like, unless you have winter studded tires, you're kind of hosed. Well, we were even getting messages via text message, right? The city that I live in started sending out these messages saying, if you go out, you're at your own risk. Yeah. Our, our, our sheriff office and cops will not be able to get mm -hmm. to you. So don't plan on it. Stay in your yep. car, leave it running, walk to a near place. If you can, like they said, do not go out period. Yeah. Um, I believe it was Sunday night when we started getting these warnings, save your energy. The power grid is getting <laughs> over your heater. It's too hot. <laughs> so then we're just like, great. Okay. Okay. Well, then Which to be clear, I ignored all of those. So <laughs> I contributed no to kidding. everyone's power. They're like, what was the number that they said? Put it below 72. And I'm like, I live in Texas. Don't tell me what to put my thermostat to. Watch your mouth. I, I mean, I, I was like, okay, I'll figure I'll help out. I'll, I'll not put it so high. I'll try to conserve as much energy. We stopped using some lights in certain areas and things like that. And it's like, did nothing. They started shutting down power. And so it's of people like me, John, probably they were like, I don't care about John's attempt to conserve. Although but, to be clear, I'm running on gas over here. I'm not heating with electric. So I got well, gas. Well, but you have to have electric to get the unit to blow the air. Well, certainly you do, but <laughs> that's not anywhere near the power consumption that, uh, yeah, like, uh, I mean, I'm the same way he is doing. So yeah. Anyway, but, uh, I feel better about myself, man. Come on. <laughs> just let me have it. But you know, that first big <laughs> shutdown of power, ours lasted 12 hours over 12 hours. Uh, I think you were in the same power grid as me, right? Alton? I don't know. And I wasn't even keeping track. Honestly, I'm like, ah, oh, power's out, whatever. You know, I was more concerned about the coffee. Really, that was a struggle. <laughs> um, See, we were fine. It was just boredom and then trying to stay warm. Well, let's let's talk about like, you know, just the conditions on the road. I think we should mention that 133 car pileup in Dallas. Oh, that was horrible. Like, Did terrible. you see the videos? No, I couldn't watch it. I heard somebody <sighs> say, hey, there's this terrible 133 car pileup. And don't watch the videos because it's completely disheartening. And I've ignored those types of warnings before and regretted it. And so I said, you know what? Now I'm not going to watch it. I get it bad. You know, 18 wheelers can't stop. And so what does that mean to us in the subsequent days? Right. 18 wheelers are piling up because of conditions and now they can't bring food. So everybody's gone out, bought up all the food and now nobody's with power and you can't even go buy anything, right? Yeah. It, well, even the grocery stores were shutting down. Like no companies were open. Well, they don't school have power. Was, school canceled <laughs> like Monday. They said we're closed for the whole week. Right. And not even virtual. So it was pretty crazy. But, um, you, you know, when the power went out, not having heat in your house, holy crap. I mean, the temperature drops. Now, Ours only got to 52 at the lowest, but that's still pretty cold when you're still sitting in your house, not prepared. I know Alton's like, yeah. You, I'm sorry. It's pretty cold because you're Texan. You guys are completely <laughs> ruining my perception of these tough Texans. What in the world? <laughs> like, we're we're bougie. I'm Leave us alone. <laughs> yeah. And um, I, you know, I don't personally own snow tires, but I, I did learn how to drive in snow. So maybe that's the point is, is that, yeah, like if you have this total freak thing happening, you guys obviously had a steep learning curve, right? Just like if uh, I got the kind of heat that you guys get in Texas, 
it would be a steep learning curve here. Mm, not really until you don't have air condition and now you're dehydrated and heat stroking. And then you're like, right. oh, maybe I should have been drinking more or something. Really but steep curve then. Yeah. Okay. I think that um, what happened too that we haven't talked about is, you know, I forget who said it, but it's like Chicago has 170 snow plows like at the ready you know, at any given time. And we don't even know how to pronounce snowplow down here, right? Like it's not even a thing. So when you think about that, every, everything is built that way, right? If you're not prepared to, to plow the roads, you know, uh, the homes aren't built for that either. And so everyone's pipes start breaking. And now you know, people's homes are flooding because the pipes are breaking and they don't have power. I didn't even have internet for a while. Like even my cell phone service was down. And so I'm driving around and I look up and the cell phone tower is like totally frozen over. Like it's probably what a 750 foot cell phone tower. And the first maybe 150, 200 feet look like the red, the white, the red, the white or whatever. And then the rest is just solid snow, like all the, the guidelines holding it up, snow, ice. And I'm like, well, no wonder I'm not getting service. So just to be clear, we may be being huge babies down here about it, but. <laughs> no, I was only teasing about the 50 degree house. And Everything else to me sounds horrible. Just the 50 degree house. And 20, you know, in less than 24 hours, we went from everything's fine to no one's really most people are not equipped or able to drive on the roads. Most people have lost, uh, you know, the power from the power grid, some amount. And a lot of people are without water because even if your pipes did not break, we're using the power grid to filter the water. So even if you're getting water, it's like, you better boil it. Cause you know, we just kind of ran it through cause <laughs> Yeah, we didn't have the power uh, to do it. And then we were even down on, on communications, which as a marketing person, you know, I'm supposed to be fixing people's websites and they're like, Hey, out to do this and that. And I'm like, I don't have internets, you know, cause guess what happens when everyone's power goes out, they all switch to the cell phone grid. Mm. Uh, I, I, that. That's true. I was, I was told Verizon in our area was not working and they were not in a hurry to get people out there due to the weather. Going back to the electric though, even though we went out, we went without for 12 hours, roughly, uh, we had friends and, and other relatives that were actually without power for multiple days. So they had it even worse. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, we know some sure. people that never went without until like the final day they lost it for two hours. Like, yeah. come on. And that was a rolling blackout that they started doing. So the those are the kinds of conditions that I think I mean, what, what are we talking about here? No power, no water, no food or limited, like none or limited access to water, power, food, and communications. Like, and we're in a pandemic, <laughs> like, but we I didn't hear anything like, about COVID that whole time. Well, cause your phone was, your internet was down. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I think that that's. Um, not something that we can just say, oh, it's no big deal, right? I mean, certainly that's going to affect a lot of people. And, um, and so, yeah, I mean, that's what we're talking about today, right? Like this is a very real scenario for us right now, but um, I've been in scenarios of flooding, living in central Texas, you know, what even, uh, is it, a, no, it's not easy top. It's uh, ah, the other. The other guitar, famous guitar player. Come on, Alton. Willie Nelson? Texas Floods. No, Texas Floods. Who sings Texas Floods? Come on, Hill. Uh, uh, people are going to unsubscribe. I can tell it now. <laughs> Somebody's sitting there going like, Alton, you've got to be kidding me. You can't even <laughs> like remember his name. <sighs> okay, so while Alton is Googling, I'm curious preparedness-wise. So when I think preparedness... There is a part of Stevie my brain. Stevie Ray Vaughan. Sorry, everyone. Oh. <laughs> There's a part You're of my talking brain about a statue that floods. I get you. I get you. Oh. No, come on, dude. Stop it. Man. 
Y2K. Uh, I'm sorry, okay? all you rockers. So I knew people that right before Y2K, I mean, they like they bought off grid cabins, they loaded up, I mean, years worth of supplies. So is it fair to say that maybe there's extremes here? You've got someone that doesn't have more than 24 hours of food in their house. You've got someone that doesn't have more than 12 years of food in their house. Like, is there somewhere? Because in Texas, I mean, you're right. Practically speaking, this doesn't happen super often. So maybe it's not Y2K prep, but is there somewhere in the middle? Well, but some weird things came up because of it, right? So when you look at the water being shut off, or if you look at my neighborhood, 50% of my neighbors have a busted pipe now, which means they had to cut off water to their house, which at one point I'm walking around the neighborhood with the, the wrench to get in and out of those drains to t cut the water off. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I mean, that's miserable. If you cut off your water, you can't turn on your faucet to brush your teeth. You can't flush your toilet. I mean, you just lose everything. So then what do you do? You have to rely on other people. And I think that also hindered a lot of us because we were so concerned about our neighbors, our family, people at church. I know I got on there. I was like, I've got a four by four. If you need help, you know, hit me up. I'll drive and, and get you or whatever. Um, yeah. And I think that, that I just want to plug Texas for that because I was telling Heather that I've, I just feel like there's a lot of us hillbilly rednecks that were just sitting around like waiting, like waiting to help. Like I got a chainsaw, I got water. And I know of a lot of people who were doing that, you know, taking water to people or, you know, whatever. I did think about selling a pot of coffee for $50 that first morning and then backed out, but. Well, so do you remember going back to like Katrina and some of these other disasters? You'd see people loitering, loitering, you know, stealing Looting every and loitering. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Looting, I think is Looting. There you go. That's what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> no, but you know, we we make fun of it here in Texas because that was before masks were cool. We wouldn't we wouldn't stand for that stuff. And through this whole event, it was like you can you can say, Hey, in Texas power went out no one was protecting anything they were worried Actually, about themselves and that's not true i talked to someone who today a business owner said that she knows of someone who actually stole water from uh, <clears throat> from a convenience store like a gas station when all this stuff went down yeah the gas station put all of their cases of water out front and he's like, oh, man, this old lady needs some water. I'm going to go take her some water and like stole a bunch of cases and then stuck an IOU in there and went back and paid later. That's a horrible so, story, Alan. <laughs> really proved my point wrong. That's right. Thanks. <laughs> what do you know, John? <laughs> but I mean, we didn't burn down the city. We didn't go and destroy everything. We cared about everyone during this whole process my neighborhood in particular oh if you live in my neighborhood and you're listening to this podcast man i mean we came through because we were helping each other left and right not one person didn't have the chance to get any help they needed because everybody was willing i mean people were making warm <laughs> meals for others i mean yeah. it was fantastic yeah it was really i i honestly and i wanted to do something on facebook but i didn't but i told heather i'm like this is what the world needs. You know, it's like a to disaster see humans. Well, honestly, Texans. man, everybody, nobody was like, Oh, you, you need some water. Well, are you a Democrat or a Republican? Like you, you forgot about this. Cause you're just like, we're all humans and we're going to do this together. And I thought, Oh, what a concept. We can just help each other. No matter if they look at the world a little differently than we do. Um, cause yeah, I totally saw that in my neighborhood and I was super encouraged at like how neighborly everyone was being. And I just hope that we can remember that moving forward for sure. Um, but yeah, I think that there's a lot of little, little things that come up that you don't really anticipate, which is why if you want to get through these types of disasters, you have to be thinking ahead, right. And be, uh, imagining, well, what happened in Katrina? Could people start looting if something happens? Totally. You know, what happens if power goes out? Could you run out of food at some point? Totally. And 
and begin figuring out like how prepared do you want to be? Do I want to be the guy who can just live fine for 12 years without ever going to town again <laughs> or, um, or not, you know, which we'll, we'll see. Ahead. I, I feel like I was pretty prepared. The only thing I didn't really have was bottled water. Right. I, Did I didn't you have go, a way to filter. No, just boiling. Yeah. You know, we had gas, so the gas worked all the time. The problem is, is when the water shut down and you can't get any out of the faucet because ours did get completely shut off mm -hmm. for uh, a few days. The, the issue you run into is I can't flush the toilet if I don't have water. So mm -hmm. I had to go and shovel snow with my wife, put it in, you know, she just buckets and things. <laughs> put it in buckets then we filled our bathtub up with it you've got to melt the ice then you've got to get all the crap out of it then you can pour it in your toilet so you can flush uh we did have somebody in our neighborhood post that they were using like the heb plastic bags from the store and they would put them under the seat and then you do your business and then take it out to the trash can oh so that sounds like a bad that sounds like a See, prank. wow that's funny Okay. This is the, this is the difference between being prepared and not being prepared is you're pooping in a bag versus <laughs> you have water or, or worse. And I think that, you know, when we talk about like, you know, Barbara, you asked, well, how much should we prepare? Well, how much, um, how uncomfortable do you want to be? Maybe you're like, dude, pooping in a bag. That's kind of fun. Right. But maybe you're like, I would rather just pour a pitcher of water into the toilet and then use that to plan. And I think that we have to look at different stages of planning. Like I was had this other book at my house. It's talking about the, the self-reliant homestead here. A book of country. But before skills. you move on to that, Alton, I want to call you. Oh, I've on already some, moved. No, I'm, I'm calling you on some BS. <laughs> so most tanks in a toilet are about, five gallons. So you're going to waste five gallons of filtered bottled water to flush one time. You flush like once a day for a household. I mean, I have been in power outages. We have lost water before. This is well, know. our, our, our family's, you know, a family of five, six at sometimes, but uh, I'm just I mean, saying like it's and Alton talking, has all girls. There's no boys, but him. Okay, so I don't know what that has to do with anything when it comes to like I don't have any water. I can go outside and pee, no problem. Prioritize. But a treat for your neighbors. It's cold okay. outside, dude. It's like <laughs> eight degrees, man. I'm not going outside in my jammies. Well, here's the thing. Um, number one is I have like a, a desk desktop countertop Brita filter that I always use. And that holds like maybe a gallon or two. And I'm always pouring water in that and filtering it. I always have the drinkable bottles of water in my pantry. And then I usually have like another gallon or two in the pantry just because like, it's just always there for when the power goes out or the water gets shut off or whatever. Um, then I also, um, you know, when the, all the water stuff, things started going crazy. Like I was filling up five gallon buckets of water and putting them in my bathtub and, you know, next to the toilet. And then I also was filling up my coolers. So I had my 65 quart Yeti cooler in there. I had my other little cooler that I use that, that holds water. Um, so I filled all of that stuff up and I wouldn't flush it every time you go number one, but I would start yeah, I'd certainly, you know, um, it's an option, right? It's an option. And when we weren't sure if the water was going to go out, you know, cause it was so many days, I'm like keeping everything full and topped off. So even like my little liter bottle of water, it's like, Oh, look, I drank eight ounces, fill it up. <laughs> so maybe it doesn't matter, but at least we're staying full on water. Right. And then in the end, um, I had some other like gallon jugs that I was taking to other people. So I'd come back, I'd fill it. So anyway, I think it's possible, even though I didn't have to go 
for every, yeah, if I went with a week without water, I probably would have ran out, but it would have been several days of that. I would have been fine for sure. Yeah. Before I had to start pooping in the bag, <laughs> I'll take three days of no pooping in the bag and be like, well, I wasn't really planning to, for three, four days. So oh, the worst part is, it's like when you tell everybody, Hey, we can't flush the toilets. I mean, everybody for the first time, you're like, you flush it just out of reflex and you're just mm-hmm. like, crap. I mean, I do have kitty litter though in my garage. So maybe <laughs> no, <clears throat> anyway. So tell us about your book. You were going to tell us. Oh yeah. So we're just talking about like levels of preparedness. And so I kind of have a dream of owning an estate that is really self-sufficient. So I've got this book. It talks about uh, the book of country skills, self-reliant homestead. And it just tells you little skills that you wouldn't have if you weren't raised this way, you know, how to raise cattle, how to work on a, you know, uh, a tractor, how to raise rabbits, how to raise chickens, you know, and then it shows you just like little clever, clever things, um, you know, how like fruit trees and just like little clever things that you might not think about that unless you grew up, you know, if you grew up in the city and didn't know any of this stuff, it just kind of breaks it down and, um, you know, how to pick a location that's going to be better for homesteading. And so I think that there's definitely that side of things, but I think that there's a lot of little things that we can do that, um, can make these sort of disaster times, um, where we're helping other people, then we're looking to get helped out. Right. And that's kind of really where I'm at. I'm not sitting here planning for, you know, world war 10 and civil war and, you know, a pandemic for 50 years, but I think that there's some little things that you can do that can totally change the game. This is a perfect example. This is a little tea light that I have, um, that I'm holding up on the video. This one's actually scented, but, um, (laughs) do you know, do you know how much these things are? Little tea lights? Aren't they like 25 cents a pop? I don't know. Probably a little bit more. It's not Did anybody do you ask any me a question? <laughs> research. <laughs> you buy them in bulk. So you can buy them in bulk for like three bucks. Okay, bag. here it is. A yeah. hundred. This is unscented tea lights. A hundred or two hundred count. Let me see. Where is this? This is two hundred for twenty dollars on Prime. I can get it here in two days on Amazon. Twenty bucks for two hundred. If what there's no that? winter storm. Well, exactly. Yeah. You couldn't do it then, but who, who here has 20 bucks? Like everyone. Okay. Here's a hundred for 13, like throw that on your Amazon order and put it in a drawer, right? Tea lights. So lit so many tea lights over the last week. And I saw, did y'all see the little, where the little trick where you get the terracotta pot? Yes. I was just trying to say that. That's about it. Yeah, those, those will help you keep your house warm uh, because we were boiling water and just setting the pots in a room trying to use the steam to heat up. That was another option. But yeah, the teacup lights are very inexpensive. You can put them under one of those ceramic pots and that will actually warm a room as well. And it's a little easier to do than just sit there and boil water all day. Well, and and they're cheap, literally like $13 that's your disaster preparedness for when you're without power for a week. It's there right there. Burn them <laughs> up. It's cheap. Like to me, I'm, I'm sitting here going like, if you didn't think that you might have some power outage and need some candles is a $12 investment, you know, you missed it. So Barb from the outside looking in with the uh, winter storm that hit us, what questions or things came up in your mind that made you really think? Besides me not answering my phone calls with you. Right. Most of them, I don't think I can say out loud because what comes to mind, like Texas is different than say Washington, because I feel like if someone tried to loot you in Texas, you'd shoot them and look, you'd be the neighborhood. Whereas here it's like, uh, you know, we're not even allowed to, anyway, again, you can edit that out later. Uh, I think that or leave uh, it in. the thing leave that I keep <laughs> being definitely struggling. leaving it in <laughs> the neighborhood, baby. 
<laughs> what is this? Tastes like chicken, dad. <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah. much. Uh, no, the thing I'm struck with actually is like, you, it seems like whether in normal life or disaster life or pandemic life, you either have to be a resourceful person or stand next to one, which it sounds like to me is what Texas did really well is that they stood next to each other. So like, when I think about these things and I think about, I, said, I don't feel like we've had bona fide disaster. We definitely have gone without water, gone without power, things like that. Um, but I'm married to a super resourceful person. So am I super resourceful? Probably not, but I'm standing next to one. And I feel like that's sort of uh, true of life, true of disaster, right? That uh, to have, so maybe the most important preparedness from what I'm hearing would be a community mindset, which it sounds like you guys had. Yeah. Oh, that wasn't a question, could, was it? Sorry. I, no, it wasn't a question, but it's all good. Um, oh so we're new I, to podcasting, y'all. We're just getting yeah. started. Yeah, we started like, last week. Subscribe, share with your friends. <laughs> uh, so what about a list, a list of items? I actually found on ready.gov slash kit that they have some suggestions for people to have. And I don't know that I'm going to agree with all these. Uh, Do you think that quoting a government website is going to make us more or less likely to get flagged? Who cares at this point? I mean, oh, they're flagging curious. people We're getting for flagged, stupid so. stuff anyways. Okay. Right, we get flagged for the odd couple. I mean, <laughs> There's probably some good reason. Okay, continue the list. Please all right. So it. water and food, they say at least three days worth. Uh, batteries, flashlight first aid kit, <laughs> extra batteries, uh, rechargeable uh, batteries. Yes. Well, no, good I have fit. a solar panel and I recharge. Uh, batteries. Okay. This. Solar panel. Uh, they say whistle. Uh, they also have du <laughs> dust mask, <laughs> plastic sheeting and duct tape. Uh, duct tape. Always. Good. <laughs> can't go wrong Sorry. With duct tape. Is that just Kids are too loud leaders? in the house. <laughs> Duct tape. Yeah. Pipe needs fixing. Duct tape. <laughs> Get hungry. Duct tape. But see, this is where I, I really start to lose it. They have moist towelettes on here. Oh, for sure, dude. Hey, oh. you. We've seen the hoarders buying up all the toilet paper. We talked about this on our show. But moist toilets. Yeah, baby wipes. <laughs> what? What's the? Even your mom agreed. Baby wipes are better. <laughs> don't bring John's my mom, mom into this. in fact sorry john's mom my mom edited out uh, i hate to say this about your mom so i hope you don't listen to this episode but my mom hoards everything and so then things like this happen and it's like damn i wish i were at my mom's house she's got well, that's, everything yeah, everybody I mean, calls them like crazy preppers until something like this happens and then you're like oh yeah <laughs> yeah but literally her pantry she could probably feed you for a month yeah. See, it's not paranoid yeah. if they're actually out to get you. So <laughs> so they also have on here wrench or pliers, manual can opener, local <laughs> maps. <laughs> I can't open my cans. There's no electricity. Cell phone no, with chargers so. and battery backups, garbage bags, plastic ties. Yeah, see, bats. that's what I was thinking. Like, you can't even charge your cell phone without power. But I have a solar panel and a car. I can yeah. totally, like, if there's cell phone service. Now Otherwise, there like Morse coding you. There were some not so smart people. If you try to warm yourself up in your car, make sure you're not sitting in your garage, especially with the garage door shut. You will not make it through any disaster mm -hmm. that way. Um, so public tonight, service announcement. <laughs> yeah, yeah, public service. Man, if you need to. Okay, so let me let me read. This is a. Uh, this is a two week supply of food list. I think that this is good to kind of open some people's minds. Is that your preppers not. book? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and these are all things that I think I've just read and done a lot of, and I didn't even realize, but um, I've been waiting for the whole world to go to crap for a long time. Um, anyway. Okay. One gallon of water per day for each family member, a jar of peanut butter, cans of juice, cans of meat, cans of stew, um, non-perishable items such as uh, like graham crackers, saltines. Um, let's see. Oh, um, cans of fruit and vegetables, protein powder, and just add water meals such as ramen, noodle, ramen noodles, hamburger helper, and other box drinks. 
uh, drinks, drink mixes. So I think that like a big thing that I was thinking like with ramen noodles and some protein powder and like, you know, whatever, some Gatorade powder, you can get by for a long time. You got your protein, you got your carbs and, and water and protein powder will really store almost indefinitely. So um, now keep in mind, a lot of this stuff you can't use with certain disasters that hit though. Like a right. hurricane, if a hurricane comes, uh, I, I, I would say here, number one thing is to get your shit out, <laughs> get going. Well, but what are you going to take with you? That's what I'm saying. Like when I go on my camping trips, I'm taking protein I'm, powder. I'm gone. Like I am, I'm hauling butt to try to beat all the traffic because if you get caught in the traffic, you're probably not going to make it out of the hurricane. You'll be stuck in your car in the line. Well, that's fire. That's true. But I mean, and that's the thing too, like knowing your area and what you're most likely to have to deal with, like, we're probably not going to have to deal with a hurricane. I mean, we might get some rain, but we don't really probably have to evacuate. Um, but like gas, right. So, so in our little deal here, there's no power to the gas pumps. So how do you get gas? right? Like it's so easy to store fuel, not a ton of fuel, like just a little bit. Like I've got, I think 10 gallons in my garage and I cycle it out once a year. You pour a little fuel stabilizer in there. You get a sealed container. You put the premium gas in there and then you just let it sit. And so when stuff like this happens, I'm like, who cares? I can go drive a couple hundred miles. No problem. But I'm like, do people really not have gas cans? Are they sitting in line for 20 years waiting, you know, or cash. That was one thing that I saw too. I went to a gas station, but I had to pay cash. I hear so. you can leave an IOU at certain places. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was something too, like that actually, um, I parked my car in front of my safe. So you can't open my safe without moving my car. That was probably the number one thing to put on our podcast. Just what? so we're clear. The IOU? No, no. safe in the car. That was, yeah. that was where, big. where exactly they'll find all your fun stuff. Oh, bring it on, man. <laughs> um, Which, and, by uh, the way, our upcoming podcast is about how you can hack and find out information about everybody and where they live. So stay yeah. tuned for that. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so I keep, keep my cash in my safe. And it was all snowy in my driveway. And I'm like, man, I don't want to drive my car out to get my cash. And uh, so I actually had to borrow some money from my mom to pay for my gas. I was See, like, oh, stand man. next to resourceful people like your mom. <laughs> Both of you sound like you have moms that just have what you need. Food, money, water. But so when the roads are iced, I can't get to her. So move back in with your mom. Is that really the takeaway that I'm getting from this? It's like, why are we criticizing people for living in their mom's basement? They're mm. safer than most. <laughs> okay. So Alton or Barb, what would you add to these lists that you think would make you more prepared? And I'm going to start off with those plastic barrels that you can put outside under one of your gutters to collect water. Rainwater collection. Yep. Yes. I would say that should be one of the top items if you're ever going to have to deal with certain things, because that would have been so much easier to grab some of that water than pick up snow all over the place. Now, if it, if it froze, then there goes my whole idea. Yeah, but you always have an extra 40 gallons of water there. Like yeah. that's never a bad thing. Oh, I have to water my plants with rainwater. It's then that's a thing. It's like a one-time investment that is going to pay you dividends for a long time and if you actually need it then it's going to be worth so much yeah so that's that's probably the first one i would do i know that a lot of people didn't have little space heaters that are like propane what are they yeah, called heating buddies thing. that you would use in the uh, deer stand mm -hmm. oh, yep. i had one of those there's a lot of people that didn't but i mean that works out great if you need to heat up the place for mm -hmm. a day or so um I knew people who had fireplaces that didn't even have wood. I was just going to say like, wood. Yeah. You don't wood even and keep rum, like what I was seven logs there, you know, like seven. Whoever designed our house put a gas fireplace in with no chimney. So yeah. Thinking with our heads over here. Hmm. 
That's uh, the other way you can die in your house from all the stuff. Light a fire in your house with no chimney. Mm -hmm. So what about you, Barbara? What are you thinking you want for oh, your preparedness? Rum. <laughs> there was Basically. so that the kids can survive. <laughs> <laughs> There's no, water thinking, in there, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's hydration it's relaxation it's the it's warm you know in a jar yep. and a, no probably wood though that was the thing that when i was hearing all your stories i'm like yeah it's something to burn um and yep. i guess i was thinking more desperate assuming that i had already eaten all the peanut butter in the house and all the because i'd always heard that you needed peanut butter and and tomato sauce right like that was like you could basically live on peanut butter and tomato sauce for a pretty long time if you had enough and mm. uh yeah, so I thought it to me it all kind of came down to can I stay warm? Can I create a way to boil water if I need to make it safe? Kind of all came down to a fire. Yeah. I was sort of waiting to hear from one of you that you had burned your dining room table. And I was a tiny bit disappointed to find <laughs> that you're like, no, my internet's out. No, I know, but the really honestly, the worst thing that happened to me was that I couldn't brew coffee. And I was like, comes back to fire. I'll man. poop in a bag all yeah. day but i probably actually if i didn't have coffee i might not need to poop in the bag so just <laughs> too much information okay solves but itself homesteading wise did you know that there is a coffee grinder that you can get it attaches to the top of a mason jar you do it by hand this is a big homesteading thing yes. and then you just got to be able to boil water and then you're there yep. you yeah i mean i have team. all of my i think that's another cool thing is like to me, I, I like the word that, that you use, Barbara, is about being resourceful. So just thinking about these scenarios, you know, when I woke up, I'm like, coffee, you know, instant panic, you know, like, what are we going to do? And then I was like, oh, I just get my instant coffee. It's my backup coffee. And then Heather's <laughs> like, well, we could use our French press and just boil water. And I was like, oh, I could just use my camp stove and you know, and then, you know, so I had like yeah. all these plans for something that was really important to me, uh, being coffee. And I think that that's just, it is, is being resourceful. And so like, you know, John likes to go and, and, and fish and hunt. And so it's like, just think about, um, like, do any of those things transfer? Like, do you have a, a live well bait bucket or something? Yeah. There's another five gallon bucket that I can fill water into, or, you know, I have a, a, uh, you know, my solar panel to charge my phone and other accessories when I'm out at the beach or out in the mountains. It's like hung that thing up on the window. It's like, well, might need it. It's got a little flashlight and a battery pack and, um, you know, so. so, so that's the other item I would tell people to get is solar paneling on your house. You've got a lot of people doing that nowadays. Mm -hmm. I would do it. Here's the problem. You have to have the battery that they sell with it. That's a little more expensive. Oh, sure. But if I had had that set up on my house, the only thing I would have run out of would have been water, but, um, surviving the cold and keeping some sanity. Uh, yeah, I think that's, I think that investment would be worth it. So I rent this house, so I can't do that anyways, but you know, if you own your house, I would invest. I see. That's so funny. Uh, to me, I'm like, yeah, how could I just live next to someone with solar panels? Cause I can't think of an uglier thing to do to a house <laughs> than put solar panels on it. Like you might as well. Well, never mind. Anyway. Yeah. I think to me is always planning that, you know, like think about to me a week, because even if you had to go without for two weeks, if you were prepared for one week, you could even start rationing like, Oh, it is not getting warmer or, like whatever your scenario is like, Oh, I still can't get water. I still can't get cell phone service or whatever. You're still better off, you know, like oh, I'll park the car and not use all of my gas yet or something. Um, and, uh, and just having that mindset and, and looking around and playing that through, you know, like what would happen if the water just stopped right now? Like, am I that prepared? You know, cause even me, like I went and filled up, my coolers but if it stopped right now then i had no like reason to uh plan you know i don't have a, a cooler full of water right now so you know i'd be scrambling too yeah it's interesting i mean there's so many different uh disasters 
that can come up. So I podcasts mean, even. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, we just prepared. <laughs> <laughs> we just have to mute people on that one. So, um, okay. So I guess let's, yeah, exactly. When the power goes out, we can't hear you. Um, okay. So let's do this. Let's do the deciding factor. What's the most important thing for disaster prep? Now it's time for our deciding factor. So when thinking about this question, I, I don't want to give a particular item. I'm going to take Whoa, options. whoa, you can't do option C, man. That's Barbara. <laughs> I was going to say, dibs. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what? I go first. I can do whatever the... I oh, want. man. <laughs> <laughs> so so I'm going to say this. Obviously, being prepared, you know, get your water, get get the food items like out and listed. I think those are really great. Ramen noodles. It's like a dollar. Sorry, John. Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, even me and... <laughs> Even me and my wife, we've talked about every time we go to Sam's now, we're going to buy one case of water and we're just going to let that build up and set that in our garage or whatever. The thing I really would say is there's too many disasters out there and too many different scenarios of different items you would have to get. So my option C is pay attention to the news we knew this storm was coming a week or so in advance. Why are you giving me that look? Because <laughs> the news always tells you the truth. I well, forgot that part. If you listen to our, our channel, then you'll know the truth, but we don't get weather updates. But I mean, all the hurricanes that you see, like in the Gulf of Mexico here for Texas, you see them coming. It's not like, oh, it's here. You know, the only difference is, is they do change their course, right? The weathermen can't tell it. But I tell you what, if I'm living in Houston and there's one anywhere near the coastline or might come in our direction, I'm out. I'm going to Austin. I'm going to Dallas. I don't care. I'm out. I'm not even going to chance it. Which is built under sea level. Yeah. Right? Like. So, I mean we were pretty prepared. The only problem is, is we could have still been better prepared if we would lose water, but we've never lost water. So I've never thought about it. So look at the different scenarios for the type of disaster coming your way, possibly, and make sure you have those items. So paying attention would be my number one thing when it comes to disaster prep. What do you think? So what it, so what is it called? If you uh, already took option when C. When she smiles like that, I'm like, I don't even talk. Just move on. Let's go out and come on. <laughs> Good. Move on. It's okay. Uh, no, I was going to say, it's the same answer to basically almost every single podcast we've ever done. Option D. There we go. It's critical thinking. Because if you are not That'll someone that, <laughs> that terribly wants to be, uh, you know, stocking up on what, don't live in New Orleans. You know, like there are some choices that we get to make as people. I don't, I think that. Uh, don't live in of, Tornado Alley. Don't live in Tornado Alley if you've got a thing about swirling, you know, dirt. Like I just, um, <laughs> I feel like some of this, uh, we don't get to act surprised when we live under sea level and water. Come, You know what I mean? And, and I feel like, but critical thinking is what I keep coming back to is, um, you know, what, what, what will it take for you to not just be prepared for an emergency, but to be prepared to be alive, to be a human being, right? And it's gonna look different in the details for each person, whether or not it's peanut butter or protein powder or, or whatever. But I think uh, critical thinking to me is the thing that I would want to be instilling. I guess I'm thinking about my kids, like how do I raise them to be the sort of people that would be able to go help their neighbors? I'd like to teach them how to look at the world around them accurately, which is why we're not freaking out about a pandemic right? Because we're going to look at it critically. And I feel like when you've got a major disaster, uh, you guys are a great example of critical thinking. You connected with neighbors, you kept in community. Um, if, you, if you weren't the guy that had all that water, you did a podcast with the guy that had all that water. You know, I just feel like that's probably um, 
that's probably the, the key to preparedness. So I'm all thrown off because it doesn't get to be called option C, John Thief, <laughs> Texas looter. <laughs> oh, or you can just make sure you marry a redneck and everything's Excellent. good. The benefits of marrying a hillbilly. Um, yeah, I, I like what you said, Barbara, about just wanting to live. And I think that what I keep coming back to <laughs> is that we're, we're all, the problem really arises when we're always looking for this instant gratification. You know, we just want the fruit off the tree. We don't want to actually get a seed and, and plant the tree. And I think that that kind of um, pervades our thinking into that, like, oh, if I want this, I'll just go down to HEB and get it. Um, or I'll just turn on the water and it's going to be there. Whereas like my grandfather grew up on a farm. And, um, you know, when I was telling him about how I'm going to have this self-sustaining home and, you know, that I was reading up on, you know, how to heat water with the sun. And he's like, Oh yeah, we used to do that back on the farm. We had this big black barrel and uh, had it right above the window. Uh, you know, so we just had water in the kitchen, but you know, mama would always have to do the dishes in the evening. Cause that's when the water was the hottest. And um, anyway, so that type of lifestyle that they had, uh, you know, was just the way it was. And so if people are not relying on themselves, they're looking to rely on someone else, something else to be there for them. And when the disaster happens and that person or thing isn't there, they don't have like something to go, to go back on, you know, it's like, Oh, what if I couldn't get gas? Oh, I'm just going to get the gas in my garage. What if I, what if I couldn't, um, get water. Well, I've got a filter. I could go pump water out of the mud anywhere. You know, I got, there's a drainage ditch over here and I can get it 100% filtered if I had to like worst, worst case. And so I think everybody needs to have a plan. That's my number one thing that you need to have to be prepared is to have a plan. What happens if the lights go out? I totally have this like crazy led lantern in my bedside table electricity is off and I wake up at night. I just like fire this thing up and I go set it on my little like balcony and it lights like the whole house. I've thought, Oh, maybe the power could go out when the lightning strikes. I have a <laughs> UPS on my computer. Oh, what if I'm in the middle of an important project and the power goes out? Ah, I'll just use the battery backup and finish it. Um, so I'm, I'm anticipating these critical items. Now I couldn't go forever, but I can get by for a little while. And to me, the real thing is like have a plan and find what things are of little cost that can be huge. And so, like I mentioned, tea lights, ramen noodles, how much is a case of water? $4, you know, how much, if you had to go and get a gallon of water, you know, if you, if you went and put five gallons of water in your pantry right now, you're probably out five or 10 bucks, right? Um, or take this opportunity to say, I'm going to go buy like a Brita filter, or I'm going to go buy an RO filter that kind of keeps some amount of water in it, now, you know, have be a careful on the filters though, because they were saying you still need to boil the water to avoid the parasites. Um, that's what one of the news blips they put out. So it's true. There are different kinds of filters, you know, you got to know what you're doing, but like a buddy of mine, he's got a well outside. He had a huge cistern, but his pipes broke and he didn't have a spare pump to like actually pump the water to his house. So he probably had, I don't know, a couple thousand gallons <laughs> that wow. I couldn't use. And it's like, dude, maybe you should just buy some PVC stuff. I went to Home Depot. There was like 15 people in the little plumbing aisle. Um, and they were actually even controlling the flow. Like they would only let so many people in at a time, like little Home Depot uh, gates, you know, they're like, hang on. <laughs> anyway, um, so like by then it's too late. That's my point is that if the disaster comes, the emergency comes and you haven't planned, thought, prepared for that, now it's too late. Oh man, we're in uh, World War Three, and I don't have any guns and ammo. Well, guess what? It's too late now. You know, should have bought that stuff beforehand, not 
when everyone wants it. It's the same thing in the stock market. You don't go, don't go buy GameStop when it's at seven hundred and fifty dollars. You know, it's fixing to turn around and plunge because everybody wants it. You got to buy it now. What is GameStop at? Is anybody familiar with GameStop? That's when you, or am I rambling? <laughs> no, that that's when you buy the put, right? Or is it? Well, yeah. Or is it the short? You're you're right. I mean. Oh, okay. So yeah. So now it's at like $91. I was trading this stock when it was like 400 or something <laughs> anyway. Um, but now nobody cares. Oh, actually it's up. It's up a hundred percent today. <laughs> Literally it's up a hundred percent today. Hey, I need yeah. you to zone back in. We're doing a so podcast. Here. <laughs> no, I'm making a point though, right? Like you have to be thinking ahead. You can't be thinking like, oh man, what should I do now? You got to be planning. That's it. Yeah. You got to plan. And if you're sitting there thinking, oh, Alton, you know, I don't have a lot of money. I can't just go, you know, budget $10,000 and put in a, you know, new solar panels and a rainwater collection. And all, like, it doesn't require tons of that, like rechargeable batteries, not that much like one of those shaker flashlights that doesn't even need batteries ever, you know, tea lights, water bottles, water filters, you have Brita thing. It's like what? 20 bucks, unlimited filtered water. But there's certain disasters that, you know, like if you're living in tornado alley, you're going to have to invest some money and get you a, a basement. So get um, your plan, have some, have some stuff. And if you're the person who has to go to the store every day, you're like so inefficient. I don't even know what to say. Yeah. Oh, the other I, thing that whatever. I didn't mention was that I had a bunch of shipments coming in on Amazon and I was like, I should go buy dog food. So I got this hundred pound plus dog and all of my shipments were delayed. So if you're like me and you don't even go to the store, I still had tons of shipments delayed that um, I went down here to Dollar General and got some some dog food. So thinking about your pets too. Oh, that was one other thing. Have an aquarium. Have you like a 50 gallon aquarium? And you could take water out of that thing forever. I was like- And protein totally, at the same time. That's right, man. <laughs> you got food. It's like a little farm. You got the food and the water and <laughs> it, it triples as, you know, a nice ambiance. Hey, and you like that algae drink, so you can get your algae oh, yeah. from that too. Totally, man. Totally. It's Keep basically my... what kombucha is, right? Yeah. Bio. Seaweed. Aquarium water. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's that's it. Playing in an aquarium. You got this. There you go. All right. Well, I guess, guys, it was fun doing the show with y'all again. Appreciate y'all showing up. To all the listeners, make sure you catch us on our regular podcast, as well as our deciding factor extras that we do. Uh, and don't, get a, uh, and tag, tag your friend. Who's not prepared in this podcast, call them out. We're calling you out. You're yep. not prepared. First and last <laughs> name that, and zip code. That way we can really, <laughs> really narrow it down. Tag him in it. And, um, and, uh, yeah, tell us, tell us what we missed. I'm sure there's a lot of preppers out there that are going to be like, dude, you didn't even say this. So give it to us. I would like to see some really interesting tools that people have uh, put together, whether it's like, you know, like you find on Pinterest, what is the most effective and Pinterest? efficient? Dude. That's how, that's where you got the candle thing from. Oh man, I'm on Instagram. You know, the demographics what? of Pinterest is like 99% female. <laughs> So what? <laughs> I mean, maybe that's your thing. <laughs> John's the 0.3% on Pinterest of males. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and give one more shout out to all the Texans out there. We kicked butt and we represented. So, yep. We're ready don't for care, it. John. You lost all credibility with the Pinterest thing. Sorry. Shh. Nothing left. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll catch y'all next time on The Deciding Factor. Everyone, say bye. Peace. Bye. This has been another episode of The Deciding Factor. Giving you food for thought on real life issues. Be sure to click, like, and subscribe to this podcast. 
as well as all your big social media outlets, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Don't forget to check out our website at thedecidingfactorpodcast.com and give us comments and feedback. Until next time, stay safe and remember to keep an open mind. 